Hello, this is Joe Teacher. Uh, this is video lecture number one, class number one. Today we will be doing the course introduction for the advanced writing class in Donga University. I am uh, making these videos in the I Factory PC Bong here in beautiful Guangan Beach. My uh, computer at home is not strong enough to <laughs> operate all of this software, so I am uh, using the supercomputer here at the PC Bong to record this. So if you do hear uh, voices or music or screaming in the background, it's the other people here enjoying their their fun time at the PC Bong. Uh, the, this first lecture and the second lecture are going to be very, very important. I know that there's a temptation to kind of zone out and do something else while you're watching this, but I really am going to be putting uh, a lot of important information into these first two lectures this week. So please uh, try to eliminate distractions, turn off your phone, uh, really pay attention because if you're unable to uh, to understand uh, the things that I want you to do in these first two lectures, you're not going to be able to uh, complete the assignments uh, that we're going to have for the rest of the class. So uh, we're really going to go over a lot of the nuts and bolts of how uh, the writing program works and some of the um, important information about documents, formatting, document storage, uh, and uh, in addition to the syllabus today. Uh, but first what I want to do is kind of go over why I think this class is so important. I, I really believe that it is possibly the most important class that you're ever going to take. And, and I know, and I'm not saying that because I'm some great teacher. I'm saying that because I really do think that this content is important. Why is that? Why is it important to study spoken communication. Think about this, you take speaking classes. Why is it important to do that? Well, it helps us to communicate with other people. Well, for example, uh, I travel a lot and uh, almost everywhere I go uh, people speak English. So it's a really good way to uh, communicate when you travel. If you can speak English well, you can get directions, you can talk to taxi drivers, maybe get emergency help if you need it. Written communication is even more important uh, because it allows us to communicate with people, uh, the people that we can't meet. You know, for example, if you wanted to make a web page or something like that, you could communicate your information to a lot of people. And written English is even more important, like it or not, and uh, I think that we would all agree that English has become the language of the internet, and uh, the internet if you want to communicate your ideas globally, uh, you're going to have to use that medium. So written English allows you to communicate your ideas with the world, and uh, that's extremely powerful. That translates into, uh, you know, a, a lot of power and influence. And I believe that each of my students have something very important to share with the world. I do? Yes, you do. <laughs> okay, so why do we write? We write to influence other people. When we write, we should always remember one thing. If people don't believe what we are saying is true, then we've failed. And if you look around the internet, you'll see there's a lot of bullshit. There's a lot of people saying things that aren't true. There's a lot of people that are that are making claims that aren't based on scientific or factual information. So getting people to believe you that what you say is true is really important, especially when everybody has such a short attention span and we're all one click away from leaving. The most important thing to remember is that we need to prove to our readers that what we are saying is true what we are saying is true. How do we do that? How can we convince somebody who's never met us that what we are writing is true? 
Well, uh, there's three different ways. When we talk about writing, I'd like you to think about, for example, someone like Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin published his book on the origin of species in 1859 after working on it in secret for over 20 years. He'd been working on it for a long time, but he didn't even tell anybody, not even his closest friends, knew about the theory that he was working on. Why did he wait so long? Why was he so careful about that book? Because he knew that many people would disagree with him and that his book would need to be perfect so that people would take him and his idea seriously. As one person famously said, if you could reason with religious people, there would be no religious people. A lot of people were going to question his idea, especially people that believed in God. This idea that, that, uh, that nature had, and, and life had evolved uh, uh, spontaneously. So what made Darwin's book special? And what made people believe him were his examples. He gave very detailed descriptions of animals he had seen with his own eyes, specifically the birds of the Galapagos Islands. Using these examples, he proved to the world that his idea was correct. Anyone who's read this book knows that he used the variety of mouth parts, the different beaks, of the Galapagos Island finches to show that each of these had evolved to fill a particular niche based on the available food in the island. So this is a very important thing. He proved using pictures, examples, that what, his, what he was saying was true. In writing class we learn to use specific examples to prove that what we are writing is correct. We write so that people will listen to our ideas and believe them. One way to think about examples is to think about how humans experience the world. How do humans experience the world? I'm going to just talk about three specific ways that humans and our minds interact with the world. The first way that we experience the world is with our bodies. We can use sensory details to give examples that our reader can understand with their bodies. We all have physical experiences. The physical experience of touch, sight, smell, taste. All of these things activate our mind and so that we can have the experience. I'd like to do a quick thought experiment. I would like for you to close your eyes and imagine that you're at the beach. Let's say it's Hyundai Beach in the summertime during beach season. There's many, many people there. First, imagine that you're sitting at the beach and you're, and you're looking around you. What are some of the things that you see? What are some of the things that you see? You're sitting there under your beach umbrella, looking around you. What are some of the colors? What are some of the colors that you see? Next, I'd like you to Imagine that you're at the beach there and you're, you're listening. What are some of the sounds that you hear as you sit there on your beach towel under your umbrella at Hyundai Beach on a busy weekend day at, during beach season? The sun is shining. It's crowded beach. What are some of the sounds that you would hear? Next, let's imagine the smells. Lots of different smells that we smell at the beach, sitting there. Imagine the smells that you would smell. I can think of several things immediately coming to mind. Next, 
What are some of the things that you feel with your skin? Do you feel a temperature? Do you feel texture? And lastly, let's imagine that we have some food there with us. What are the flavors that you might that you might experience as you're eating some snack, some special beach snack? Think about that. What's your favorite beach snack? What do you like to eat at the beach? So all of these sensory details, just using this example, maybe we can think of a lot of different things. Maybe you thought of some of these things. The visual details, children playing in the sand, making sand castles, people lying on the beach and swimming in the water, the sparkling sand with white speckled shells, the water meeting the blue sky at the horizon, lifeguard stand and fried chicken man, the sounds and the laughter of children, parents and children talking, maybe the lifeguard's whistle, the lapping of the surf, the waves on the sand, the splashing of swimmers. Whenever I do this thought experiment, I always think about the screams of the children as the waves come in and they're all there with their yellow tubes and they're laughing as the, the waves knock them over. Smells. The ocean has a specific smell. This, it's always the beach has a smell, the slight fishy smell, maybe the smell of fried chicken or dried squid. I always think of the scent of suntan lotion that everybody has put on their sunblock. Tastes. Salt water. When you swim, you can taste the ocean on your lips. Maybe if you have a, some fried chicken or some cold beer or some salty dried squid or some potato chips or even cold water has a delicious taste on a hot day. The feelings and textures we feel on our skin, the heat of the sun on your back, sweat, cool water in the ocean, soft towels, the sand has a particular sm uh, feeling as we walk through it. All of these things are unique to the beach. These types of details in your writing can transport your reader in their imagination to that place. This is really the power of sensory details. We've all experienced this. We've all gone to the beach. We know what this feels like. And so if we write that, people's bodies say to them, yes, that's true. I felt the sand on my toes. I felt the sun on my skin. I know what that ocean smells like. So these experiences that we share really bring truth into our writing. It's very important. Another way that humans experience the world is through their emotions. We've all felt scared. We've all felt happy. We've all been in love. We've all had these uh, powerful emotions. And we can use anecdotal details. Anecdotes are stories stories from our experience to give examples that our readers can understand with their hearts, with their emotions. Here's a quick example of an anecdotal detail. I remember one time when I was really scared, the scariest day of my life. Do you ever, do you have an experience like that? Can you think of a time when you felt scared or apprehensive about something or nervous? Think about that experience. How would, you, how would you describe that experience if you were writing about it? Here's an example. Learning something new can be a scary experience. One of the hardest things I've ever had to do was learn how to swim. After I changed into my bathing suit in the locker room, I stood timidly by the side of the pool, waiting for the teacher and other students to show up. After a couple of minutes, the teacher came over. She smiled and introduced herself, and two more students joined us. Although they were both older than me, they didn't seem to be embarrassed about not knowing how to swim. I began to feel more at ease as we got into the pool. Look at these words here. Scary. 
timid, smiled, embarrassed, at ease. We can use these words in our writing to talk about feelings, to talk about feelings, because all of us have had the similar experience. We've all tried to do something new and felt nervous. We can use these experiences in our own writing to get people to agree with us. Another way that humans experience the world is with their brains. We are thinkers. We can use factual details to give the reader examples they can understand with their minds. Most often these factual details, if you're trying to write a persuasive writing, these factual details will be numbers or facts. Here are some examples of factual details. Factual details can be statistical. 90% of all college freshmen gain weight during their first year of university. Factual details can be scientific. The average winter temperature in Busan is 34 degrees Celsius. Now if you get your information from some place that is a trustworthy source, for example a government or a university website, then people will agree with you. They'll say, oh that's true, I know that that's true. Sensory, anecdotal, and factual details provide the proof that can prove to the reader that what you are saying is believable and correct. And this is very, very important. As you're writing, think about what kinds of examples you can give to your reader that will help them believe that what you're saying is true. If we can convince people that what we are saying is important, interesting and true, then we can influence their thinking. And if we can influence the thinking of others, we can change the world. And this is very important. I don't know what your goals are for your life. I don't know what you want to do in the future with your English degree. But being able to write well in English is probably the most powerful tool that you can have. It is incredibly powerful if you're able to communicate your ideas clearly. That's what we're going to talk about in this class. Okay, let's shift gears a little bit. I want to talk a little bit about the mechanics of the class. For this class, we are going to be using the school LMS system. This course information, video lectures, class presentations, documents, and assignments can be found in the LMS system in the school website. If for some reason you're unable to access the LMS system, as a backup, I will also be placing all of the course information on my personal teaching website, www.joeteacher.com. However, it is important for you to log into and watch the videos on the LMS system if possible as the school will see who did what and who didn't and this could cause problems later. So make sure you're using the LMS system. Only use joeteacher.org if you absolutely have to, okay, because your participation in the course and in fact your attendance for all of these courses is registered according to your usage of the LMS system. So let's look at that now. If you go to joeteacher.org, joeteacher.org, on the home page, I have a link here. If you click this link, it will take you to the LMS uh, online portal, and you can log in. I'm already logged in, but uh, uh, you can log in using the buttons over here and stuff like that. I would like you to show you very quickly this is the advanced composition page. I will be adding uh, more content to this. Obviously I'll be adding the video that I'm making now. It'll go right here. Uh, there's course documents here. This is a copy of the book that we will be using when we meet in the classroom. Other documents are here. There are some important links. I'm going to talk about a few of these today. And all of your assignments as we go through this. I will be modifying this slightly as we uh, are going to be unable to do things exactly the way that we did them 
uh, when we had the classroom class, and I don't know how long it's going to take us uh, before we're able to uh, return to the uh, uh, classroom. I hope that we can return to the classroom soon, uh, but nobody knows how long it's going to be. I, I hope it's. O I hope we're only online for two weeks, and then we can meet e with each other. But who knows? So. Uh, I'm just kind of doing this as I go along. This is kind of new for me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm much more of a classroom teacher than an online teacher. In fact, I've never done anything like this. So uh, please be patient with me and with your other teachers as we try to develop this material. Um, uh, I'm doing the best that I can uh, to to make it interesting. I know it's not as interesting as being in the classroom, but. Uh, and the other thing, a writing class like this is quite a bit of work. It's a lot of work for you, and it's even more work for me. So uh, we all need to kind of work together to help each other. So this is the, the website. Uh, if you need any information that, and you can't get it on the other website, there's also a Contact Me page here, another link to the LMS system, uh, my office hours, uh, my email if you need to contact me. Obviously, I'm not going to be holding office hours right now. However, uh, I am available for you. You can contact me by email or Kakao Talk. I'll be giving you my Kakao Talk ID in a moment. If you need help with anything, not just this class, if you need help with, if you're applying for a, a working holiday visa, or a, or if you're if you need help with interview coaching, or if you just need to talk, I'm here for you. My students are my life. I love my students. I'm here to help you. So if you need anything, uh, please let me know. I would love to talk to you. This is the uh, student view of the course. There's not much up here right now. I will be adding more to this. The syllabus is here. Uh, the lecture contents will be here as I'm uploading them and making those public as they go public. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about some of this stuff uh, as we go through the, uh, the rest of the presentation here. So, to summarize, there's the LMS system, which is found through the uh, school website. There is the backup information, which will should have all of the same information. In fact, probably more the information on JoeTeacher.org. Textbook. We will not be using the textbook during the online portion of the class. However, I would like for you to purchase it before our first classroom class. I'm going to try to find materials online that we can use until we meet together. Do not go to the bookstore uh, th right now. I don't even think it's open, but uh, uh, it's too dangerous to go there, everybody together. So just hold on, uh, and as, as we go through this, I'll be providing you with the materials you need for the class. You do not need to, pr to, to get the, the textbook right now. But if, they, if we do have classroom classes, I would like for you to purchase it because there's a lot of Im important information can be found in the textbook in addition to the, the, uh, the unit lectures. Syllabus and course calendar. Let's go through that right now. I'm going to go back to the course contents. Click on the syllabus button here. All right, so uh, this is English 301. Section 2. If you are not in this Section 2, you, you may be in Damien's class or Colwyn's class. If you are in Section 1 or Section 3, you are looking at the wrong presentation. So make sure that you are in Section 2 uh, if you're watching this. Uh, this is my one of my emails. There's also the other one, joeteacher.donga at gmail.com. Either one are okay to communicate me with. This introductory course is designed to develop college-level writing skills and will focus specifically on learning to build effectively constructed paragraphs into well-organized essays. We're going to spend about the first half of the class working on paragraphs and then we'll move into essays in the later parts of the course. 
um, the book we're going to be using. Uh, you can see here that it's 20% for midterm, 20% for final, 20% for attendance, 20% for participation, 20% for homework, and other assignments, quizzes. The university dictates the use of a bell curve. 50% of you will get A's. Usually what diff the difference between an A and a B in this class is your attendance. So make sure that you have perfect attendance if you want to have an A. Here is the course calendar. You can see in week 8 we're going to have the, the midterm exam and in week uh, 15 we'll have the final exam. The, um, the midterm and the final will be written exams. You'll write a paragraph for the midterm and an essay for the final. I'll give you more information about that later. Uh, some learning outcomes and other stuff here. Um, if you have any questions about the syllabus, uh, please let me know. I'll be happy to assist you. So that is a summary uh, of the course calendar. We'll be working on that together. This is the important part. that I want to cover today. So this, is, this will be your assignment today. Uh, so listen carefully to this part. Document storage and document formatting. I have a lot of students in this class and we're, you're all going to be producing a lot of writing. So we need to organize this stuff carefully. So please register for a Google Mail account, a Gmail account, if you haven't already done so. I want you to go to Google Drive and create a folder for this class. And I want you to use this title exactly. ADVCOMPS20 space hyphen space your name space hyphen space your student ID number. No period here. Then click share and share the contents of that folder with joeteacher.donga at gmail.com and with the other members of your work group. I'm going to tell you about that in a moment. So I want you to create a folder in Google Drive. You'll, if you don't have a Google Gmail account, you'll need to make that now but I want you to make a folder in the Google Drive and share it with me. So let me go through how to do that. If you don't have a, uh, uh, a Google account, a Gmail account already, you know, it's not going to let me do it because I already have uh, I've already logged in. But if you go to Google, up in the corner here, you'll see uh, the uh, various things. I think there's a place that says create an account or something like that. So once you've created an account, you can go up here to this little thing here in the corner that looks like a little waffle. Click on that. Go to Google Drive that'll take you to something that looks like this. Go up here, click New, and create a new folder. Now this is the important part. It has to be exactly perfect or I will not be able to find you. Okay, because I need to use the search function. So A, D, V, C, O, M, P S two zero space hyphen space then your name maybe your name is not my name let's say my name is E De Ho just like that and then space hyphen space and then your ID number. 
just like that. ADVCOMPS20 space hyphen space EDEHO space hyphen space and your ID number. This space is in between here will allow me to search your class, your name, or your ID number so I can find your stuff easily. Then just click create and you can see here, here's a new folder. You don't need to do anything else. You don't need to put anything in the folder right now. But I would like for you to click on it. When you go up here to this, click on this little down arrow next to it. Click share. And you'll enter the names and the e or email addresses of people that you can Okay, so uh, make sure that it says, can organize, add, and edit here. Make sure you've got the little pencil. Type in joeteacher.donga at gmail.com. Okay. Joe, just ignore that holidays in Republic of Korea. I don't know why it's doing that, actually. Okay. JoeTeacher.donga at gmail.com and add me. Okay. So it should say Joe Teacher. Okay. Then click. So you don't need to add a note. Okay, in fact, eh, okay, go ahead and notify me, but uh, you don't need to write anything here. Hi, Joe Teacher. You can write if you want. You can write, hi, Joe Teacher. Teacher, I love you. Uh, no, you don't have to do that, okay? Just write, uh, just, just, just add me. Add the other people in your group, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute how to find their emails and then click send okay and then I'll be in there and you'll see that this is shared with somebody okay so that's what I would like you to do create this folder advcomps20 space hyphen space your name space hyphen space your ID okay so that's part of your homework for today Let me see here. Okay, we are uh, starting to get low on time, so I'm going to do document formatting uh, in the next lecture. Okay, so uh, I'll talk to you about that in the next lecture when I give you your first writing assignment. We'll skip that part for now. I think we're doing pretty good already. Student groups. Each student in the class will be part of a group which will work together and help each other complete their and edit their writing projects. This is an important part of the class. I, I, I really believe that when we help other people with their writing, our writing improves. And the reason is very simple. When I write something, if I misspell a word or I, or I use a, have a grammatical error, I can't see my mistake. This is true. Even me, I'm a very experienced writer, and I'm a good writer in English. But I make mistakes, and because my brain made that mistake, I'm unable to see that mistake. But if somebody else looks at it, they can say, hey, you misspelled this word here, or oh, your punctuation is wrong here. Helping others find their mistakes helps us be better self-editors. So if we learn to look carefully for mistakes in other people's writings, that can help us learn to edit our own writing later. So we're going to be doing a lot of work together. You're going to be helping each other a lot. A large part of your grade for this class is based on how much you help each other and how, what is the quality of your help for each other. So this is not a small part of the class. It is a big part of the class. 
I usually give bad grades to people who don't help their partners. So if you really want to get a good grade in this class, if you want an A+, plus, be a leader in your group. Be uh, uh, I want to see you working hard on and see improvements that you make in each other's writings. So please create a Kakao Talk group so that you can communicate with your team members. So you'll probably have to email them. Each group has a captain, so the captain should contact the other people. If someone in your group is unwilling or unable to participate, please let me know. Uh, please keep all records of your Kakao Talk group chats. I will check these at a later date to make sure everyone is participating. So, w especially while we're doing the online class, these Kakao Talk groups are going to be very important as you're sharing files and sharing information and comments. As I said, a large portion of your individual scores will be based on how much you help your team members. Please make sure you put forth maximum effort in the group work that I assign. So let's look back quickly at the uh, home page for the group. Going here to People, you'll see all of the people that are in the class here and Joe Teacher. You can search for students and just see the students. You can search for teacher and see the teacher. That's me. Look at this guy. Report an inappropriate picture. <laughs> Is that inappropriate? I don't know. Maybe it could scare children. The other tab here you can see is called groups. And I've already divided the class into nine peer review teams. Most of them have four, two of them have three. If you click on the groups, you can see the names of the people. In the, uh, when this is open, there's a way to communicate with each other. So this will be a little bit more uh, in depth. Uh, the person here with this is the captain of the group. So there's one captain and three members in here. If you have a problem with your group, uh, please let me know. Uh, uh, if you're if you if your ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend or your girlfriend's ex-boyfriend or your boyfriend's ex-girlfriend or some of the, you know, if, if there's a problem, let me know. I can change the groups. It's not a big, big deal. Uh, so let me know if you're in a group you don't want to be in, and I can probably do a little bit of changing. I want you to be comfortable with the people that you're working with. Okay, these lectures are supposed to be 45 minutes long, so I'm kind of keeping, I don't want to make it any longer than I have to. Okay, so for your homework... Sign up for your Google Mail account and set up your Google Drive class folder. Share it with me and with your other group members. Okay? So you should be able to get the emails from your other group team members. So ask them what is your, and you need to make sure that you, for this, uh, when you share it with them, with your other group members, you need to make sure that you share it with their Google with their Gmail email. Don't share it with their neighbor, their neighbor email. They won't be able to see it. Okay, so that you need to use their, their Gmail email. Group contacts should also contact their group members and set up the Kakao Talk group. Add me to your group. My Kakao Talk ID is Joe Carrier. So uh, you can also contact me individually if you have any questions. As I've said, my email is joeteacher.donga at gmail.com. Or you can contact me using the contact page at the LMS system. Or you can contact me using Kakao Talk. As I said, my ID is Joe Carrier. I would be happy to, to help you with any questions that you have. Um, we've got a few minutes left. There are a couple of things that I wanted to look at. Uh, uh, one is on the joeteacher.org website, there are some links here. Um, one of them is the Purdue Online Writing Lab. Uh, 
this is an incredible resource for writers and uh, I'll be probably using some of this during the online uh, courses there there's a lot of stuff about writing academic writing research and citation uh, teacher and tutor resources there's even a section on ESL that can help uh, second language students here so this is a really great uh, resource. It's all about writing. So we will probably be incorporating this website into, uh, we'll probably be using this basically as our textbook uh, as we go through. Uh, so that's important to know. Um, one other thing. Let's see here. What happened to my my Joe T. Oh, there you go. Okay, not there. Um, one other thing that I think can really be helpful is Grammarly. And Grammarly is a free online um, a free online uh, editor uh, that helps make some... I can't do this because I can't read the thing. But you can download it and you can put it right into your web browser and uh, it's really good. Uh, this can really help with spelling and grammar errors and uh, uh, it's it's very uh, helps a lot. Even me, you know, I, I can't uh, uh, I don't know what all this is. Anyway, uh, Grammarly, sign up for it. Very, very good. Okay, and there's a lot of other stuff. Uh, let me look at my list real quick here. What did I have that I wanted to tell you? Yeah, something. Oh, one more thing. And I don't have a link for it here, uh, but I, I, I will have. Uh, uh, it is Open Office. ApacheOpenOffice.org. This is a free um, download that you can uh, add to your computer uh, in place of Microsoft Office. Microsoft Office is very expensive. I know some of you have it. Some of you probably don't. You are going to be unable to use Handsoft HWP documents are not going to be accepted in this class. So I would highly recommend if you don't have Microsoft Office that you download Apache OpenOffice. It's free uh, and you can use it to create uh, Microsoft, Microsoft Office formatted documents um, and uh, I'm not going to watch this. I'm not going to have time to let this download right now, but uh, it's really good. And basically it does the same thing as, op as Microsoft Office, except it's free. Uh, so if you don't have Microsoft Office, don't worry. You can use OpenOffice for your word processor. So uh, that about does it for today. Uh, Thank you for listening. Uh, I hope that you have uh, enjoyed this lecture. <laughs> and I hope you listened carefully uh, because there's, uh, and the next lecture too, there's going to be a lot of stuff that, uh, that you need to know in the next lecture. So uh, thank you and have a good day.